Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Second City Studio Theater in Hollywood, California. How are you feeling this lovely Wednesday night? Great, please, Sasha Sussex, you're talking to talk with text during the show. But right now, we up to your host of Couch Candy, Jed Candy! Jen Candy. My father, thank you, was the late great John Candy, who is no stranger here to Second City. Now tonight I have a very, very special guest. She is alumni of Second City and star of the hit show Workaholics and The Brink, Mary Beth Monroe. Let's give a huge round of applause. But before I bring her out, I want to show it right now. And she's like, no, 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 it's Paycheck, right? Yeah, I want to watch it. And now she wants to watch it. it. So let's take a look at this clip called Paycheck from the Second City Review, Red Scare, starring Mary Beth and Brian Gallivan. I'm really good in it. <laughs> <laughs> you saw my paycheck. That's all I get for teaching folks. I saw your paycheck. I make more selling drugs. I saw your paycheck. That's all you get for molding mine. You saw my paycheck. What about no teacher left behind? What about no teacher left behind? What about no teacher left behind? Wow. wow. Mary I Beth. Mean, what kind of pipes you have on I you. can't believe that wig stayed on every show. It's amazing. That, no, that was my real hair. That was your real hair. I was like, wait a second. No, that, that was, was my real hair. That was yeah. your, you had that great bob. Oh, it was it was great. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was great. No, I just really loved that severe thing. And then I look back and I'm so white and the black hair, but I, I rocked it. I rocked it. Well, you all were matching, so you were in bright red. Yes, it was just a it was a goth explosion. <laughs> I love it, I love it. I always ask my guests what their favorite candy is, and you said peeps seasonally, oh. and then specifically, specifically, Trader Joe's dark chocolate peanut butter cups. I just could eat those like crack cocaine. And these, the sad thing is, is that these only come around in Easter, and my birthday yeah. falls on Good Friday. Oh. And I was so excited, Easter, obviously, that Sunday, and I didn't get a chance to eat a peep. So this is my first birthday slash Easter peep. Well, ha happy so. birthday. Thank happy you very much. Happy belated birthday peep. Mm. They're oh, they're just terribly awesome. Did you ever put them in the microwave? No. Like a s'mores? No. Oh my god, that's a fucking great idea. That would be a like great Like a idea. graham cracker and then a Hershey piece of chocolate yeah. and a peep. Oh, you can melt that, the peanut butter cup, and then on a... Why are you obsessed with melting it? I don't know. Because <laughs> it's so, it's already so perfect. I don't understand why I'm you need to destroy it. Be no, because they always, they always said that if you put a peep in a microwave, they grow. Oh my God. And then it shrinks and then it just is. Science experiment later. <laughs> Very excited. You, you'll have leftovers so you can, you can take them. Oh my God, am I taking some home? If you would like. Oh, too many more spin classes this week. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, right. So I wanted to figure out how, I wanted to talk to you about how you got to Second City. Oh gosh, okay. So I was in Detroit going to college at Wayne State University and I was in my junior year and I needed to get a job to just kind of make some cash, you know, make ends meet. And I got a job cocktail waitressing at the Second City Detroit. There was a Second City Detroit at the time. And uh, I was working there for maybe six months and got to really know the cast well. And in that time, I did one improvised show that I was uh, understudy for. So I did maybe like three of those for a show called Funny Like Cancer. And then I did, uh, it wasn't that funny, uh, <laughs> obviously. And then uh, I took one class, one uh, level one improv class at the Second City of Detroit. And then six months into Cocktail Wager saying Margaret Exner, who is a really dear friend of me of mine now, right. uh, was leaving the cast. And um, she was amazing. And the current producer was Joe Janes, who they had brought in from the Second City Chicago. And he decided he was going to kind of mix up how they were going to cast, like recast the existing main stage. So he was going to make it a very democratic system, which happened only once <laughs> at this time. 
And you were the guinea pig. And I was part of the guinea pig process. Hi, oh my god, we miss you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for Yay! coming. Um, so, uh, so, um, so, uh, so he was like, okay, we're going to invite a bunch of women who have been involved in classes and or that the cast would recommend. We'll have them come and play sets. And then uh, we're all gonna vote on who we want <gasps> to be the cast, the main stage cast member. And then I'll, he ultimately would make the final decision, but he was really gonna take into account who everybody wanted. So let's just, let's backtrack and recap. I took one, I had one improv class and I had done <laughs> one understudy of an improv show. And I was doing theater, I was you know in, in an undergraduate theater program. And then one day uh, I was working as a cocktail waitress and uh, Naima <laughs> Funk had ordered food and I brought, I would always bring their food back before the shows to the cast and like chit chat with them or whatever. So I brought back her food and then Mark Orzeka was like, hey, Mary Beth, you improvise, right? And I was like, uh, well, I, I told him my resume that I've already told you twice at that point. And he's like, why don't you play the set with us tonight? We're, we're trying to figure out who's gonna take Margaret's place and why don't you just come play with us? And I was like, yeah, absolutely, that'd be fun. I'd love Not to. thinking for a second that I would have a shot in hell at it happening so it was kind of cool because I was set up in a way of like I'll never get to do this again I love this cast I love the second city I've fallen in love with improv this would be great to just get to go up there and do it so I went up there I had a great time uh, I think I sang a song at a pep assembly the only thing I remember is singing a song with Mark Evan Jackson at a pep assembly that was about we were the sex education teachers <laughs> singing a song uh, uh, that we had created for this pep assembly and that's all I remember and it went great and then two weeks later I'm still working as a cocktail waitress they invite me back and I play another set and then I'm not kidding like a week later I showed up for work as a cocktail waitress and Joe Jane said like the whole cast weighed in I watched your sets uh, you know, we want you to be a main stage cast member, and it was that ridiculous. Wow. That's how That's I got how hired. It was. it was completely insane. Wow. I truly, for like the first six months of doing it, had no idea what I was doing, and got a shit ton of notes from everybody in the cast. Like, all right, let's talk about yes and, and uh, <laughs> let's talk about not asking questions. And um, okay, so uh, you, you, when you edit, you don't want to like hit us really hard, like stuff like that. <laughs> It was terrible. Like, I had no idea what I was doing. But uh, I tried. I really tried. And, and I did learn by, like, shotgun. It was, like, shotgun yeah. wedding learning. So, True trial and error. Oh, my like... God. A lot of error. But a lot of error. But it worked out. It worked out. It worked out. And then how long were you there in Detroit for? Uh, I was there from 99 to 2001. And then I decided to... I had talked to the producers at Second City Chicago, and I really wanted to do the Chicago main stage. Um, and so I just said, I'm, I'm going to move there and I'll, I'll just start, I kind of started from scratch. So I auditioned for the tour co, right. got to do the tour co for eight months and then did some stuff with Second City Theatricals and then I joined the main stage in like 2003. Right, which was, I think was when I started working it, at Second yes, City because yeah. I was working in the box office mm -hmm. and then everyone that was on the main stage was, was you and who else? Came, I came in on, well could, the show I came in on was like uh, Antoine, me, Brian Bolin, Jean yes. Villapique, um, Lisa Brooke. Yes. And we ran that, that show, uh, Doors Open on the Left, That's for like nine months because Liz Kakowski had gotten hired for SNL, so I took her spot like two months into the run. Right. So I, I ran her material left. for like nine months, yeah. Oh my god! And I finally got to write my own show, and it was great. And you yeah. went straight to the main stage. Did you ever do any of the ETC s shows? Or? No, I would never do that stage. Yeah, just curious, <laughs> just curious. It's the second stage, it's slightly... It's like the second, so like the main stage is like yeah, the stage that. where like all the tourists, like everybody who knows the Second City, like that's the show they want to go to. And then there's like an overflow theater that exists called like the Second City of Disney. <laughs> and like they only do shows like Thursday through Sunday because they really don't have the audiences to do anymore. And so I just vouched to do like the means. My husband. I was going to say that was your husband. Last, he though, did the ETC he, he, stage. So he really. Andy, yeah. thank you. Thank you. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> you did your best. You did your best. <laughs> I know because I would always, that was me trying to explain to people on the phone was like, so we're all sold out for the main stage, but you can go see ETC. And I would though can say- Can we stop now? Can we stop? No, but I will though, I will, in Andy's defense though, I, and I loved when I'm you sorry? were there, but I did love- I'm sorry, should I eat a peep? Eat you a talk peep, well. To <laughs> Just to make this go I down I loved easier. both of the shows equally, and they were fabulous. Thank you. I, I agree more for the- uh, That main stage the main was the stage best portion best of that portion. sentence. Yes, yeah. yes, of course, always. Yeah. I, Staying corrected. Nailing it. I don't want to get in between some sort of domestic 
Oh, it's terrible every night. That's all we talk about. No, 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 no. It's fine. It's fine. He knows the truth. <laughs> so how many shows, how many reviews did you do at Second City Chicago? I did. So I came in on Doors Open on the right, uh, which was not my own material. The first show I wrote was Red Scare. And then I did a show. I did three original shows. Red Scare, Erectile Dysfunction. And then my last show was War, now in its fourth smash year. And then, and then I left. And then you left. Sayonara. Like, See ya. Now, what did you... I'm L.A. bound. <laughs> <laughs> did you like writing your own shows? Oh, I or... loved it. I loved it. And you know, uh, so uh, my first show, Red Scare, it was right when Bush got his second term. Right. And obviously, the Second City is an extremely liberal place, and everybody was so upset about that. So we were going into this process with like such anger and rage, and thus why it was called Red Scare. And and uh, that whole show was so angry, and it was directed by Mick Napier, who was the best person to direct such yes. a show. He's so political and very angry and very... 50% gay some of the time. <laughs> uh, and he's just an, a remarkable character. And so to get to do my first Second City main stage show with him, being as nervous as I was, was like uh, mind blowing. Especially channeling, especially that show because I don't, I, which is funny now because obviously I play Alice on Workaholics and she's very angry. But before that, my material that I would do on Second City stages were very character driven and usually weird and like kind of quirky characters but never necessarily angry and I remember that show in particular most of my material came from like an angry, an place, angry place angry characters um angry topics angry themes and I remember being like this is so fun to work from that perspective of just working from the perspective of, of opinion right um being inspired by things that piss you off and creating material out of that as opposed to what's this weird, cute character all about? You know, coming from a place of opinion and, and politics was interesting. Well, so I think that show really solidified, like, I love writing, and it just kind of was inspirational and di in a different way for me. Would you think writing would be your strong suit or improv? I think you know definitely... Some people... You know, I think definitely improv if I look at it in the context of what I do now, right. today, because that's probably what I do more of just because of, you know, having the opportunities I have as an actor and getting to work on a show like Workaholics where we improvise and then also doing a lot of improv shows still here at the Second City Hollywood. But I do, I mean, I look back at a lot of the things that I wrote within an, an ensemble right. and I feel like my writing is so much stronger and better within the context of an ensemble. Right. And I remember all these alumni coming back, so many that you interviewed in this show, coming back when I was on the main stage saying, you have to treasure this time. Yeah. You, are, you are executive producer, writer, actor. Uh, you get to do all your casting. It's the most precious time. You'll never get to do this again. And I remember being like, oh gosh, sentimental alumni, <laughs> whatever. Because I'm like in and my ego, like doing it, like it's always going to be this way. And, and then you get out to LA and you're like, oh God, no, it's so cutthroat and all, you know, you, you'll, you don't get to do all of those things. Some, you know, eventually maybe you do when you get to, yeah, I have so many friends that have gotten their own shows and have gotten to have those roles, but that those are few and far between and rare. Yeah. So that time was very precious in getting to, get to do a billion different roles. And I think all of those roles were so supported by other your other cast members and the even and the, the producers at Second City saying, yes, you're in your well, 20s you and you and... have huge egos and you think you know everything <laughs> about the world. Like, go ahead and write it and put it on stage. Like, it's insane freedom that you will, yeah, Which I, I miss. Oh my God, I love and I miss and... It was the, some of the best times of my life well, um, on the main stage, not on the ETC. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's funny that you said, because your character Alice on Workaholics yes. is just so a horrible. biatch yeah. beyond belief, oh, it's which great. is just yeah. like you. Oh my God, I'm a terrible person. Yeah. <laughs> but I always, what I thought was funny, when I first started watching that show, I know, I remembered one of the characters that you did in Red Scare, and you were talking about kind of like the angry yes. show, and it was a character that you said that you loved called Caroline. Yes, Caroline. So give us a description on Caroline, and then I have I have a clip 
Of oh, your, I, do you oh, want to? Let's, good. Let's, oh, I haven't seen it from back in the day. It's up to you. Did you say no, you want to? Uh, oh, talk I'll about. Tell you about it first. Tell okay. me about it first. So, um, so on top of, I didn't know if I wanted to share this. It's kind of a personal story, but I'm pretty open about it now. But when I was writing Red Scare, on top of the whole George Bush thing that you know was going on of his reelection, I also was going through a personal thing where uh, a jilted lover of mine was stalking me oh. and leaving really terrible like uh, notes on my car and letters to my house and like I emails. Remember this yeah, it was happening. like emails. It was very under the wraps because I honestly kept it very quiet well, yeah. because I was like, I'm not going to let this person ruin my first show on the Second City main stage, which is exactly what he wanted to do. But it was like horrible. And I just remember being like, and he was, it's one of those things where you like date someone and they know you so well. And so they're gonna say the things that will hurt you the most, you know? So that's what I was experiencing (laughs) in these letters or whatever. So it's fine, I can laugh about it now somewhat uh, outside of the nights I cry myself to sleep about it still. But um, <laughs> but for the most part, I'm over it. And uh, and I remember I was just so angry and I was like, I can't believe this is happening like in Use our it. world. And I can't believe this is happening in my fucking personal life. And I was so angry. And I just wanted to write like, you know, Mick actually gave me, who knew what was going on. He was one right. of the only people that I like confided in um, about what was happening. And he was the one that said, you're not going to tell anybody about this. You're just going to do your thing and use it and write a great show and prove them wrong. And I was like, yes, that's exactly what I'm going to do. And he's like, and I challenge you to write a character that you think is horrible, like the worst person that is completely self-righteous and thinks that, like, you know, everything they're doing is right and correct. And and he's like, and take it to, like, you know, uh, like as extreme as you want. And so then I was like, what could be worse than, like, a parent who you know, could completely justify, like, ruining their child. So I put it in the context of this mother who you find out throughout the course of the, I'll let you see the monologue, but, like, who basically is is letting her the child... Worst just, it's the mom. worst. Like, the worst mom, like, just, like, you know, letting her child get as obese and giving her all the food that she wants and justifying all of her medical inadequacies uh, because, you know, she she feels like she's happy, like her child's happy, <laughs> and that's all that matters. So, she, anyway, you'll Let's see the clip. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. We yeah. got it. Whoa, 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 whoa. What did you just say to me? Yes, my daughter weighs 250 pounds, but I am not apologizing to you for it. Who ever said that a toddler has to actually be able to toddle? (laughs) Oh, and you know that Food and Health Administration? They say she needs to get three well-balanced meals a day. Well, you know what, pal? She gets nine, and in my world, that's above average. (laughs) And isn't that what we want for our children? For them to be good at something, be unique, get some attention for themselves? Well, if a three-year-old being wheeled around in a radio flyer wearing maternity clothes isn't unique, I don't know what is. And yes, I know the health concerns. And yes, she's had a heart attack. (laughs) But really, what are the odds of that happening again, all right? She's got a greater chance of being attacked by a pit bull, for God's sake. We've got three of them. (laughs) And sir, you know the one thing I am grateful for is that my daughter's lack of vision prevents her from seeing your ugly, disrespectful face. (laughs) Type 2 diabetes does have its perks. But she's fabulous. That's all I submitted for my Alice audition. <laughs> that was it. It was right there. Like, and then you got it, right? Do you need anything else? This is terrible. <laughs> what, what? How, how did Workaholics come about? Oh, so, well, speaking of Red Scare, so Anders, back in the day, and I found this out much later, saw that show when he was living oh. in Evanston. So he was living in Evanston before he had started his Second City journey or whatever, and um, had seen the show, and then I just auditioned. So when I was out here, I was probably out here for... I think the show started shooting in 2011, 10. Okay. So I think in around 2009, I auditioned for it, and um, I was I was the first actress they called in for Alice, like the first actress <laughs> well, they that brought sometimes in is good. to audition for it. I know, which was great. Well, that either is good. good or bad. They'll either forget you yeah, after exactly. all the people they see, or they'll remember you. But it's you. truly, and I was the first actress to audition for The Brink, too, which is crazy. And those are the two shows I booked. So I literally so tell my agents, like, I got to get in there right I away. Gotta, I got to be the I gotta, first like, person. I got to, like, ruin everybody else for them. They have to think, it's, think of me. 
But, uh, but it's yeah, amazing. yeah. So I, I, I auditioned, and I'm not gonna eat this. You uh, I, I don't mean to stress well, eat, like, I know, I you want to eat it, but it's a whole thing. Like, I'll just lay here, and like, oh, this is the best thing. Talk about um, diabetes. I'm sorry, yeah, I, know, I don't right? mean to promote it either. No, I'm glad you showed me that monologue. I should need it. Um, so I auditioned, and then um, I went through the normal process. So I went in for casting. They liked my tape. They brought me in for producers. They, they liked me, and then I tested twice, once for the whole uh, like internal workaholics team, our showrunner and the boys, and then I went in front of Comedy Central. Um, mm. But Anders supposedly said that when he saw my tape, he was like, oh my god, that's the girl from Second City, and I love her, and she's great, and, and had recognized me from that. But, and that's so a, it was a good, and it was saying a weird that's thing. improv based? I don't think I realized how improv based is Workaholics. Adam is Devine. There a, is there a script? I've seen Adam Devine do a stand Adam up. Adam Devine improvises 99% of the, of the time. time? No, yeah. He improvises a lot, but he, he gave, a, he always gives this weird percentage that it's like 36%. Like we all, audi- we all um, improvise like 36%. I don't know what that means, but it's, you know, we'll do like the script and then, you know, if we have a funny add on, they, they listen to us pitching stuff and we can pitch jokes and stuff. But it is a very loosey goosey, you know, they want you to have fun with it. The problem with my character, I would love to improvise more, but I'm so uh, responsible for like the setups of the episodes. Right. Like, I have to give so much You're the through line yeah, that has yeah, yeah. to kind of be there. But I've, I feel like I've improvised some really funny um, names to call them, which I'm really proud of. Oh, well, that's so, good. Yeah. <laughs> Like Jagmo, I really like that one. That's a good one. That's yeah. a good one. A good it's one. such a it's such a slightly can be raunchy show. Was there anything that they proposed to you that was like you're like I'm not saying that or I'm oh yes not okay, so gonna I do that one, oh many I have many but like the latest one was we had um we had uh uh oh my god I always want to say. I get the Hemsworths confused, and we have oh, the Hemsworth uh, on the show. God, not Liam is Thor. Chris Thor. Chris? Chris. Chris. Okay, Liam. And so Liam, Liam is was on the, the show. Other. I always mess them up. Uh, but Liam Hemsworth was on the show, and I I had a very uh, explicit scene with him, which was awesome. <laughs> oh, there Sorry, you. honey. But it was awesome. <laughs> He's beautiful. He's a really beautiful young man. Uh, and But they wanted, there was a scene that was written that they wanted, they wanted him to pick me up in a skirt, because I wear pencil skirts, pick me up in a skirt and wrap my skirt over his head and then press me against a wall as if, oh, you know, mm-hmm. we were, he was yes. pleasuring me. Yes. And I was just like, I can't do that. Like, I love you guys. It's such a funny sight gag, but I just can't, just because I don't want to do that to yeah. him. There's no avoiding that. Liam's Hemsworth, you know, yeah. Liam Hemsworth's face in my... Good times. You're like I just hello, hoo-ha. I can't do it. Yeah. So I say no to things like that when I'm just like that's a little too much. That's but, a little too far. But I haven't said. I mean, I'm usually game for you know in that same episode right. he still did that, but it was done in a less risque way, obvious way. <laughs> that's so. Funny. How are you guys doing? <laughs> uh, but it was yeah. So I say we I'm pretty game, but yeah, I'm game, but I just don't. You know, some things I'm just like. That's a lot for all all involved, you know. Well, yeah. Sometimes you just don't feel comfortable yeah. doing certain things. Uh, you know, and there was another time too when I was doing these. Um, I did this series of Applebee's commercials. Oh Has yes. Anybody ever? No. Okay. I, I have a photo. I, really I have a photo of, a of your Applebee commercial. I was a chef. You're an Apple amazing Apple. chef. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, I thought I was pretty endearing. You were. Uh, and I sold the shit out of that Applebee's. Uh, if um, Applebee's was closer, I would have gone more often. Yeah. Oh gosh, I miss Applebee's. I don't feel like there's a there lot of Applebee's in LA or Chili's, right? There used. To- Chili's, I think, is still really. There's one in Westwood. That's maybe the only one. Do you know what there's not any of in LA except for one? And I go there often. Is Red Lobster. Real sad uh, about that. There's see, only one there's Red Lobster, where? like, all the way in Inglewood. To- I was going to say Torrance-ish, Ingle- 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 Torrance, Inglewood. That's the only one. And I try- I, we have a group called the Lobster Mobsters. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Hashtag Lobster Mobsters. <laughs> and we make plans to go to Red Lobster because that's a big thing in Detroit. I'm serious, Jason. It's true. <laughs> uh, and I it's did- awesome, and I miss it, and I can't believe there's not more of those Red Lobsters that Cheddar My group of friends did that with break. Sizzler. Oh, sizz- there's a lot of Sizzlers. Not anymore. There's one on, like, Sunset. Yeah, but is it open? Like, I yeah. feel like they're slow. <laughs> I mean, I haven't been there, but... But speak, going but back to we all have our thing. We all have our thing. We have our Midwest, they, our Toronto, our yes, Canadian. It, we all it, have it, our it, thing. Yes. Yeah. And it's hard to find and it here so in you LA. Did always. So you workaholics, and then, 
and then that led right into the brink. Well, you did. I did a few. seasons. You did a few seasons mm-hmm. of how many seasons of Workaholics has there been? We're they're airing our sixth sixth season. Six years. And uh, <laughs> we've done for five years. So we've, wow. we've shot like two seasons within one year, and then we're about to shoot our seventh season in August. Yeah, it's crazy. I know. It's such a fun. Alice is getting old as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> How's her liver doing? Oh, not good. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> or just right. One of the two. It's one, 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 of the two. one or the other. It's always good. It's always good. Um, I was going to say, when you... I'm not going to eat Okay, it. so... Don't <laughs> no. play back and forth. When you... Okay, so you moved to LA. I want to talk about when we met. Well, we met at Second City yes. in Chicago. Yes. But then... We re-met. We re-met. I had moved back from Chicago and started working... Um, on According to Jim. Yes. So I put my resume out to everyone because I was like, I need a job because Second City wasn't really Second City here. No. It was like, there was like, no, it was, there was five people in the office and they're like, well, you could get a job if someone quits or gets fired. Or you can intern. Or I can intern for free. And I was like, I need a paycheck. So I started working at According to Jim and I put my resume, I gave it to Jim Belushi and he was like, oh, come here, dude. He's the best. Who was amazing, was so great to help out. He's like, here, come and um, you can do background. And from background, then I got to do stand. Yeah. Yeah. I'm standing work and then all of a sudden one day you show up yeah. and my worlds start colliding of like yeah. wait you're now here and yeah so I had you- just moved to LA yeah. and I had no same position as you I had no work lined up luckily I got an agent relatively quickly but I was just auditioning but I was like I I had saved my money from a second city paycheck in Chicago which those is are huge. oh there's just, just massive woo! rolling well, in the last bucks. year years so I had my four thousand dollars <laughs> I saved coming to L A and I needed a job and I was like I don't want to wait tables first of all I had zero waitressing experience except Support. my cocktail waitressing right. experience which I was terrible at and was basically hired out of within six months so I had very <laughs> limited skills. And Jim, same thing, when he came to Chicago, he's so great like that. He came to Chicago, he had seen me there, and then when I came to LA, Larry, a really dear friend of mine, Larry Campbell, who was also Second City of Detroit, was working on According to Jim, and uh, Larry said that Jim had mentioned that they needed someone for Courtney Thorne Smith, who was pregnant, yep. and um, shooting, I don't, I can't remember what, it was like their last season, or I second to last it was season. Second, I, I feel like you were there two, uh, two seasons, seasons, two seasons. so it was, was the, the second, second to last, last season. And Courtney Thornsmith was pregnant, and she didn't want to do any of the rehearsals during the week. Only come in on shoot days. And just come in on shoot days. So I got to rehearse with all of First Team. I rehearsed with Jim and with Larry and wrote down all her blocking. And then I'd have to give Courtney her blocking and tell her what was happening in the scene. And it was just really awesome because I hadn't had much television experience up to that point. So I just got this crash course. And I feel like that kind of sitcom learning is is great to learn. Because it's so complicated. For cameras. Because it's different than shooting a film and shooting uh, single camera. It's just, it's a whole different beast. And it's... It's very com- it's very complicated, even though it looks so simple, but there are so many moving pieces oh, right. in it. And I just had zero experience with single cam or multicam. So I, I looked at it as, yeah. you know, a little bit of like a uh, apprenticeship, internship, and to figuring out what was going on. And I got paid for it and didn't have to, like, worry about money, which was amazing. And you so, also got bit parts. So and, you got- yeah, and it led to, like, I did three episodes of According to Jim out of that. Yeah. Because Jim's really good like that. Yeah, I got, I, the same happened to me. I was doing the stand-in, and then I got little yeah. bit parts. I feel like our, our, our careers have been mirroring, mirroring each other. Because uh, Second City and then According to Jim. I'm going to host my own show. And you're going to host your own yeah. show. And we we both also did the Yes to Yes. <laughs> We were both oh uh, spin instructors, except for she actually got to do the spinning <laughs> teaching. Which was also when I first moved here. Yes, when like you first moved here. Like in the first few years. There's a spin studio in Venice called Yaz Yoga and Spinning. And yeah, we were taking classes there and exercising there and we'd see there and then we'd, we'd see each other there and then we did the teacher training and... Yeah, I was a yoga and indoor cycling teacher for like, honestly, for you like two to four while. years. The, um, oh yeah, I don't think it they, was ridiculous. I don't know why that they happened. They liked you. They didn't like me. I was, I was. Um, oh, they hate it. They're insane. No offense. They just they, they are, described me as 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 a, their golden retriever. They were like, oh my god, that's horrible. Um, and these are like yoga. I was, and I was cycling. done. I was done giving. I just did. I was, I was teaching. I was doing the yoga part, and they were like, oh, that was that was great. Um. You just, you remind me of my golden retriever. And I was like, they are horrible people. Everyone in the class was like, 
I like golden retrievers, but I don't know if that was a compliment. I'm like, <laughs> I don't think that's the compliment I was going for. So um, insane. My, insane. my yoga skills uh, were like that of a golden retriever. Oh God. Well, they, you know, you're lucky because you avoided being hired as an actual teacher. That is true. Because when you are hired as a teacher, then the abuse just gets It gets out worse of and worse. Like they walk out of your class. She like yelled at me in the middle of the <gasps> class, like teaching people. I'm like teaching students. She's just like, I don't remember d bridge pose going that way. I'm like stormed out of the house. Oh yeah. Like, <laughs> okay, let's all breathe. <laughs> I think I said, um, uh, one of the teachers I was shadowing had said something about uh, say, ha happy baby pose, but they yeah. were calling it dead bug dead pose. Dead bug pose, yeah. And, and I wrote a whole yeah. paper using dead bug pose and she was like, no one should ever say that. We want positive and I'm like, well, then you better tell your teachers because that's what I've That's insane. Been, it, was, it was crazy. I so want to do something about the two of them. I've thought about it so often, like yeah. creating a show about that I situation. I feel like that's a world are, in itself. They are the most bizarre people I've ever worked for. Like, well, I think a lot of, I'm sorry for those spin instructors out there. <laughs> Taylor, I'm sorry. I'm There's really sorry. A, they, there is, it's, it takes a certain personality. It really does. Like a spaz. I mean, all you do is you get in front of people. That's all you do. That's all I did. I literally got on a bike and I was like, you, you fucking pretend. All you do is pretend you're not exhausted. When you are, because you're screaming while you're riding a bike. So you're fucking exhausted. You have to keep smiling and just yell at people in a positive way. It's insane. It's like, put me in the rubber room. It's like, it's nuts. But I was really good at it. <laughs> you were great at it. I think that was my problem. Is I was like, how many classes do I have to do a, a day? Oh no, I'm, I'm oh, good. Oh god, I'm, I'm I good with just the. I'm and you good justify with just the it. You're like, I'm gonna have such a sick body, and like, yeah, you get really skinny, <laughs> and you can't like, you sleep ten hours a day. Like, you have no social life, and you're just exercising and drinking water and sleeping. Like, this is horrible. And this is hilarious. I was still smoking at the time. I was just gonna say, I think I remember that. Still I, five, five. I do remember that because I was oh, like, Oh God, yeah. You're I, like, was, I should I would quit. Hide it. I was trying to hide it from everybody. I'm like, don't tell anybody it yet. And then I'd get on my bike, like only, only in like your, you know, twenties. It was like my late twenties that my body would. Now it's like I can't walk upstairs and talk at the same time. But yeah, I was insane. I don't know how I did that, but but you survived. Mind over matter. Yeah, you, know? you survived it. Oh my God, that's hilarious. Oh. But I just, I always love that little, that brief moment in time that we. Oh we God, had that there. moment in hell. But I learned a lot. I really did about yeah. how to like not treat people. Yeah, that, that is. You learned too. a lot about that. Yeah, that's, and you don't have to do it anymore. No. Unless you want to play a spin instructor somewhere, you've got a lot to pull from. You know, from. I got real excited about Broad City when she like wanted to be the school. Yes. Like Abby wants to be the spin instructor. I was like, totally can relate to that. <laughs> Love it. You go, girl. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> How are you guys doing? How you guys, how's everyone doing? How's everyone doing? Good. How's everyone doing? I want to talk about The Brink. Because mm. I liked that show. Oh, you're the only one. Oh, I'm... <laughs> no, there was, there was there a was, handful. Yeah, no, people liked it. Oh, you have a clip. I have a, yeah, yeah cool. that was honestly so far dream job. Gotta say, I that was the best. I mean, I love workaholics, don't get me wrong, but this was just on a whole other level for me of getting to work with Tim Robbins every day. Like I yeah. just love that guy. We're still friends and I learned so much from him and working on, you work on something like Workaholics, which is a Comedy Central budget and Comedy Central experience. And then you go to like HBO and you're like, holy shit. It's a whole like, different ball game. Oh my God. Like this is what fucking money can buy you. It's just like <laughs> crazy budget and like, you know, 500 extras for a television show and you know, everybody's just like, how are you doing, Miss Monroe? Can I get you some water? Do you need any more of Trader Joe's black chocolate and peanut butter? What do you need? And you're just like, I'm fine. Can I get you something? Like, that's what I felt like. I felt like like the battered wife of like, oh, why is everybody coming up to me? I, they can sense a new, you no. know, like, so nervous. But they smell the fear on you. They smell the fear. Yeah, like, I just wasn't used to it. But, but then I got used to it, and then the show got canceled. <laughs> No, I did get used to it. It was very nice well, after no, a while, but it gets, it gets comfy cozy when you're treated does, like that. It does. And it's, and when you're and I will say this, like for any of you actors out there, 
going from starting in a career of like commercial, that's where I started doing commercial stuff, theater, commercial, and then kind of like did the traditional like guest star, series, you know, whatever. The nicest people in my experience have been the ones at the top. Like the, the nicest just, directors, the nicest actors are the people who are like, in my opinion, Tim Robbins was one of the kindest, most giving, professional actors I've ever worked with. And he didn't have to be. He had no reason to be. He could have treated me like dirt and, right. and he just knows from the business and the industry to not do that. Like he just, that's how, that's why he is at the level that he's at. That he's at. Yeah. And then I've had experiences in commercials where I'm just like been treated like so shit. terribly by this commercial director. Right. And I'm like, I get it. Like you're still, I'm a commercial actor. So you're definitely way ahead of me as far as this system is concerned. But like, you're still just a commercial director, dude. Like, it's not like I'm here for you to, you right. know, to, to abuse, power play essentially. over. And, and I just feel like I've had so many more experiences like that when the stakes weren't high than right. I did when the stakes were high. And I feel like you get better work out of people when you're treated well. Yes, and at that level. And I just, it was a big learning experience for me, um, having come from a lot of other projects. I was like, oh, this is, this is how you treat people. Like, this is what it means to be both amazingly talented and a complete professional and make amazing work. Like, this is how it works. So it was an interesting experience. And I'm, I'm super into politics because of my husband, Andy. He really got me into politics. Um, and I thank you for that. Sorry about the ETC thing. And um, I tried it three times, didn't work. Just yeah. twice, just twice. Yeah. Just twice. <laughs> Um, so, uh, but I, so I was really, in, I, you know, I, I'm more informed about politics than I, than I ever, ever have been, and Tim's politics just perfectly yeah. align in as far as what my politics are. So to get to do a geopolitical show so that with was... Tim Robbins, whose politics I already respect, was, you know, mind blowing. I was like, I quit. I'm done. This is it. I'm over. I'm, I retire. Like, mic drop. I mean, All I really done. can't because I can't afford to. But no. I, if I could, I would. I would mic That's... drop, retire. But yeah. you don't have to. No, not yet. Not yet. It's still not it's yet. Still, it's still. How did you get that role on the brink? Did you? So again, I was the first actress they brought in for it, and um, it was for Jay Roach, who did all like the Austin Powers movies. Um, he did a, 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 I think he did Election, right? No, no, no. That was Alexander Payne. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, yeah, Jay Roach. He brought me. In, I went in front of him and the the creator Roberto Benabib. And I just, again, had an initial, initial audition with them. They really liked me. And then I had two more auditions with Tim. Like, they brought wow. me in, and I did one test with him where it was, it was the scripted material. And then Tim just, God bless, just went completely off book. He just started improvising. And I honestly, in the room, remember going, thank you, God, for, like, him wanting to improvise. Because that's, like, so where I feel comfortable. You're like, and that's like, my strong suit. Yes. I, I can like, nail it, this on yeah, right now. and I was now. shocked because, I, I mean, I know he's, with he has a theater in Culver City called The Actors Gang. Right. And they do a lot of, like, viewpoint work, and they do a lot of Im improv work. So And I knew that, but I didn't think, based on what the show was, because right. it is such a specifically scripted show, like, it's so, it's 30 minutes of, like, one piece leading to the next. It was a very fast, you know, plot driven show that I didn't think he was going to do that and then when he did that I was it was great and we improvised together and I swear like it really felt like after that first improv I was like if I don't I mean if I don't get this based on the connection I just had with this dude I'll be shocked like it'd be I'd be shocked I felt really confident going out and then they brought me back in with like I they were testing two other girls and again HBO so classy any other test I've ever done They've had like all of us sitting in a room together. Like all <gasps> the girls are sitting in a room together and you're like staring at each other. And like there's like, you know, someone trying to be nice. And then there's fucking Jeanette who's just like, <laughs> So have you like been learning a lot of the, like have you been studying for this a lot? Like, oh my God, I don't know what choices I'm gonna make. Like trying to psych everybody out. And you're like, all these games are being played <laughs> before you even get into the room. And HBO is so classy. Like they timed it out that like, you, I never saw any of the else that I was auditioning for. Oh, that's like you nice. come in, I went in, I left, and I guess they must have showed up after me, and it was fantastic because you feel like, well, there's no one fucking else here, <laughs> <laughs> fucking getting this. Like they got one choice, you know. Like you just immediately go in with great 
you know, you feel confident going in energy. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to, Oh, I am the wild card in this this room, aren't I? Totally. And it's, it gets rough. I mean, girls want the, you want the part and you're like sizing each other up, whether you like it or not. And you know, you make the choices in the moment of how you're going to treat the other person, but ultimately you can't help and go like, well, if they want a fucking blonde, Jen's getting it. Jen's getting it. If they want a fucking blonde, that's great. great." You know, like you're doing all that shit in your head, which is so stupid. Does it, do you have, were you ever in an audition where you can actually hear the people doing the audition in the room? Like, oh my God. You're you're sitting there and you're just like, why are the walls so thin? Why are, okay. And then you start, and you're second guessing yourself because you're you're just, she really made a good choice on that. That was good. Didn't think about that that one. call. Like, that was a really good choice. Yeah, you're, it's so stupid. I don't understand that. And they have relatively big offices. Right. Like, I but you have to put you right next, next to you. The hallway. But they want to put you right next to. Yeah. It's all mind games. I'm convinced it's all mind games. One last quick story about casting, which I know you guys are real fascinated with. Uh, <laughs> but, like, there's another thing where, like, I've been to a casting where you each go in, and then they ask you to wait and then it's like the fucking bachelor where they give three people a fucking rose and they send everybody yes. else out. And you're like, really? Like, mm-hmm. you're going to come in, like, so I have to go in, audition, come back out here with eight other people, wait, and then you're going to say, you can go, you can go, you can go, mm, let me check on you, you can go, the rest of you stay, thanks ladies, see you later. I'm like, just... Bring us back for a callback. Like, why are you doing this? No, guys? it's the it's worst. It's so horrible. It's, it can be very Ugh. degrading. It's, it's just, degrading it's and awful. It's you have horrible. To have super thick skin, and yes. you have to think it's hilarious. Oh, yeah. You have, you to, have to have a sense of humor about yes. it, and all the time you just have to go, that was hilarious. And then you can come home and cry. Yeah. That, <laughs> or that's, be depressed. That's but what the, the, car moment, the car ride home them. is for. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe, I can't believe I why did, did that. I choose this for my life. <laughs> I got accepted to fucking, <laughs> you know, Princeton, whatever. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. I have a clip from. I didn't get accepted to Princeton. <laughs> I was never that smart. So don't, that's you not my You said you went to college uh, for, what was your degree? Theater. Theater? Yeah, I went for theater. I I got involved in theater my junior year of high school, and I had an amazing drama teacher who, my my folks were pretty poor, and so I knew I was going to be doing, like, student loans or whatever, and he reached out to the Wayne State Theater Department and said, you have to come see this girl. They came to see me in Peter Pan. (gasps) I flew. I was Peter Pan. I was going to say, were you Peter Pan? Uh, I was Peter Pan. Oh, yeah, I was Peter Pan. I actually got out of a DUI because I played Peter Pan in (laughs) high school, my (laughs) senior year of high school. That's a whole other story. I don't know if we have time for that. But I think, actually, I told Taylor. So Taylor Williamson is here. Um, he came uh, on second in America's Got Talent, right? right. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Beth yeah, Punk. we'll plug that for he you. He came in second. Woo-hoo! It's my interview. I can do what I want. But he was the first. You were the first podcast I ever did. And that was the first time I ever told that story <laughs> about getting, you, you uh, yeah, it was my is... senior year in high school. Okay, I was now drinking. you have to tell the story because I'm, okay. I'm fascinated about year, this. It was my senior year in high school. I was an awesome student. I was on National Honor Society. I played sports, everything. My parents, I I really gave the front of a very good kid, but I also hung out with a lot of stoners, and we partied, and we drank a lot, and all that stuff. So my last year, uh, my last day of my senior year, we went out uh, drinking at a place called Stony Creek in Michigan. Uh, It was the hangout, and uh, I drank, like, a lot of shots of vodka and a lot of beer, and I decided it would be a great idea to drive my friend Shiloh home uh, from Stony Creek after all this happened. So we get in the car and I'm driving and I'm okay and everything's fine and we're listening to uh, uh, what was it, Love Tunes with um, Adam Carolla? Uh, Love, uh, Love Line. Love Line. We were listening to Love Line and I'm driving and I'm on the expressway, everything's fine, staying in the line, staying in the lines, talking, everything's okay. Get into our neighborhood and I remember on the radio on um, Love Line. Yep, Love Line. Love Line. Uh, Adam they Carolla. were talking about. Uh, Dr. Drew. They were talking about. Um, uh, female um, fellatio. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oral sex. Yes. Oral sex for the women. And this guy was talking about like something weird that happens with his girlfriend's area. And we started laughing and I'm looking at her and I'm like, oh my God. we're like 18. I'm dying laughing and I'm looking at her and I'm looking at her and I'm laughing and I'm laughing. And I look forward and they're heading right toward a tree and I slam on the brakes, but it's not the brakes, it's the gas. Oh. And then I slam into the tree and I total the car, hit my face on the steering wheel, break my nose. She hits her uh, forearm onto the glass, breaks the glass. She's fine, thank God. I'm bleeding, but all I'm like, why is there cold water running down my neck? Like I have no idea, I go like this, I'm bleeding. 
She, my friend Shiloh, leaves me in the car. She just is like, my parents are gonna kill me and I can't stay here and I'm sorry and I love you <laughs> and don't hate me forever and she runs out of the car and leaves. And so I'm sitting there, totaled car, and it's in a subdivision in like M Fraser, Michigan. So all the lights come on, like it's like boop, 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 like all these lights, oh, all these people come out and I'm just sitting there. I remember I ruined my Bjork t-shirt. <laughs> I had a Bjork t-shirt that I loved and was just covered in blood. And I get out, and long story short, police come. It's a small town, so like three police cars comes, two fire trucks, two ambulances. It's like the whole city was like, there's something going on tonight. Like, <laughs> they all come out, and uh, I am sitting in the back of a police car. My parents come up, and my mom is crying, and she's like, I'm so glad you're okay, and I love you, and I'm so mad at you, and you're grounded forever, but I love you. And then the police officer is like, comes back to the car after talking to my parents, sits down, turns around and says, uh, you know, you're really lucky. You could have killed someone. You could have killed yourself. Uh, that was very irresponsible of you. Um, but uh, I, think, I think you're a good kid because did you play Peter Pan in <laughs> Frasier High School production of Peter Pan? <laughs> And I was like, yeah, yeah, I was, that was me, I was Peter Pan. You were great. You were fantastic. You were really good. Okay, so we're going to let you go in the custody of your parents oh. and let you off. And we're not going to give you a ticket, but if you ever do anything like this again, you know, obviously you're going to be in a lot of trouble. You're a good kid. Don't do anything like this again. And it was amazing. So I got out of it, went to the hospital, got stitches, was grounded for like two months. But, oh, my God, it was I was like, ah, power of celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> Learned my lesson. <laughs> Fucking, that's how actors should be treated. <laughs> like, and then I wanted to be a star. <laughs> I came to LA. By way of Detroit, uh, Chicago, by, by and you made Peter it here. Peter Pan at Fraser High School. Uh. Did you have to sing in Peter Pan? Yeah, oh yeah, girl. Did, I was gonna say, you've got a, an amazing set thank of pipes. Thank you, thank you. I, I haven't sang much since Second City. You know, again, it's that thing, Second City, you were a singer, actor, yeah. improviser. You got it to was do like everything. a triple threat, quadruple threat. You had Dancer. to- Dancer, you, you had to do choreography, everything. you had to do everything. And I just haven't had that chance since I, I did like a one woman show. I think I sang a little bit in that, but I didn't, I don't get to sing much anymore outside of the shower and in my car. You gotta change that. Gotta I know, that. I know, I should, I should. Well, what's on the, what's on the horizon for you? Well, I'm in the, it sounds like someone's like, I know, I was like, <laughs> walking upstairs. And I, uh, I am in, you know, I'm going, I'm auditioning for pilot season right now yep. um, because Workaholics is great. They let us, you know, audition for the things. Do so. they let you audition yeah, for the Yeah, I mean, I was able to do the brink alongside Workaholics. It was a little bit of like well, they would have been idiots if they said, no, yeah, you can't yeah, do that. Exactly. I mean, they do say no to some things when they're like, no, that's, you know, no, we don't want you to do that. But when something like the with HBO or yeah. like something they, that is as respectable, they say yes. And I have a movie coming out in, um, I think, July. It's supposed to come out in July. It's called Keeping, Keeping Up, Up with, with the, the Joneses. Joneses. Um, Zach Galifianakis and John Hamm. Oh, and, wow. Uh, right, ladies? <laughs> Hello. Tell me about it. Uh, I asked for a pass, a hall pass, for my husband, for John Hamm. Uh, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Wait, wait, sorry. 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 No, he is really dreamy. I mean, he really is really And he's dreamy. funny. He's so funny. He's so funny. He's just like the perfect man. I sorry, love you, honey. Sorry, sorry, um, so, but no, <laughs> this, this is this awkward yet? <laughs> and then this is cool. And then um, Isla Fisher, who's married to Sasha Baron Cohen, yes. who is, uh, is hilarious. I love her stuff. And then also, I got to work with Gal Gadot, who's the new Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. She's in oh. this like comedy. Yeah, she's playing John Hamm's wife. What is the movie about? So uh, Zach Galifianakis and Isla are like suburban cul-de-sac couple. Uh, Matt Walsh, who plays my husband, is he and I are suburban cul-de-sac. Friends oh, that's awesome. of Zach and Isla, and this new couple moves in, and um, Zach basically works at like a military kind of like manufacturing facility, and you come to find out that Gall and John are spies, but you think they're bad spies, uh, but then you find out that they're not bad spies, and then they kind of get Zach and his wife to like get caught up in it. So it's almost like a True Lies meets. Oh, what was the Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie? Yeah, like uh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. That's exactly. It. That's a way to go. That's perfect. I'm going to use that from now on. Uh, yeah, so it's like True Lies meets, meets um, Mr. and Mrs. Mrs. Smith. Smith. And then you find out like who the villains are. And I'm just going to leave it at that because oh. you should watch the movie. There we go. Really when does that come out? 
Uh, I think July, but I'm not sure. Oh. It's, I'm doing reshoots at the end of this month, so I don't know when. I, it might be pushed a little bit. Oh, but that'll be fun. Yeah. Zach Galifianakis is He's amazing. hysterical. Oh, my God, he's amazing, yeah. Have you seen Baskets? Yes. It's so good. It's a great show. It's like the most endearing character it is, I've ever seen. I highly recommend seeing it. When he, just... he was telling us about that show when we were working oh, wow. together, and I was just like, you're doing a show about a rodeo clown? Like, it seems a little... And Louis Anderson plays his mom. Yeah, but it's so well done. Yeah. It's so sweet It sounds weird, but it's surprisingly... It's really good. Yeah. yeah. It's really weird and good. I love it. What song? I love you. I love you. I'm so excited that you're here. I'm excited to be here. You get to do it. It is a little cold in here. Are you really? Cold? No, I'm oh. hot. You are. <laughs> Damn, you are. Really hot. On stage, I'm like always hot. No, normally it doesn't I am matter. too, but all of a sudden I was like, oh, I wonder because I didn't know if you got chilly. I love that you all like were like, how obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm so She's fucking so, hot. She, you've been on the brink, you're so, you've, you've yeah. hit that. I'm so hot now. Gross. That's so gross. <laughs> I do wish I could be like that sometimes, but I can't. But you, from time to time, with people you know and care about. Yeah, for sure. Right, Andy? <laughs> doing great. My doing, doing great, man. <laughs> doing, doing great. Doing great. Hon. He's um, been asleep this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> He's heard all these stories, poor thing. <laughs> He's come to support, which is really yeah. nice, and we appreciate it. Yeah. Um, what's on the Mary Beth bucket list of uh, personally oh. and maybe and then with uh, professionally? What's on my bucket list, personally and professionally? Well, I'd love to have a family. Okay. That's definitely a bucket list thing. Um, you know, hopefully that'll happen in my future. Uh, professionally, um... <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, Andy. <laughs> uh, uh, I want a child to perform on the main stage, not the UTC. Um, <laughs> Kill two birds with uh, one kill stone. Two birds with one stone. <laughs> Hopefully, I mean, I know my genes will prevail, but yeah. you know, we'll see. Uh, so, I'd love to have a child. I would love to. I would love to. You know, I really would love to be able to create my own show. I've been trying to put a lot of energy into that the past few years. It's very. It's really hard. I honestly yeah. respect so many of my friends who have done it, and I. It like I think it. You know, you see so many of your friends doing it. You know, my friend Jillian just had an idiot sitter on Comedy Central. Oh, right. My friend Sam just sold a show to Comedy Central called Detroiters oh, wow. with Tim Robinson. And it's all about, like, these ad execs in, in Detroit. And that's going to be hilarious. And I just, I have so many people who have done that. And, I, and it's weird because you don't know their process outside of what they tell you. And so... You kind of go like, look at all my fucking friends selling shows. I'm going to totally fucking sell a show. Like, you get into this, like, vibe of, like, this is going to be fucking easy. And I'm going to pitch and and no problem. And then you kind of dig into it and you're like, oh, it's a lot of, it's a lot of, like, convincing and getting the right project and having the right pitch. And so I'm really trying to figure out how to do that because I, I think just, I, I mean, obviously our Second City background and just being able to write and create for as long as I did, I would love to be able to do that. Um, and I, I really love doing movies, you know, it's a different beast than like doing television. I love doing the series of Workaholics, you just kind of like, you get it down and then yeah. like you're a part of this family and it feels like a home away from home and like you're, you know, doing your thing and... And it, it becomes like a, a schedule that you get comfortable with. It's Television like is according to Jim. Yeah, like I was so like into that because I was like, oh, you just you see the same people every day. It's a sense of stability. Stability because it, la- it. it lasts mm-hmm. nine years, yes. or and it constantly goes as opposed to like a film that can you're, yeah you're it's working for maybe a week yeah and you're meeting them for the first time and you're with them. There's a week. no table yeah. read. There's no totally. Th- I do find that always. Unsettling. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's a little or disappointing. Yeah, I kind yeah because I coming from a theater background and just you know with Second City and just in college and you kind of like you rehearse you bounce ideas off of each other and yeah. then with the movie you're like okay here's your lines hopefully you know them and here's the director here's your person you're yeah. gonna do the scene with you're gonna make out or you're not or whatever and, and, and then you're just like oh wait okay and action and yeah you're like, oh, okay go and half the time you're just like I don't remember what I did in this audition like yeah. it was so long ago I don't the know t- what the span yeah. anymore yeah like. You know, because the auditioning process for a movie, it's like you could audition in March and not shoot until August. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I don't even know what the hell you cast me for I, anymore. I like, dyed my hair a different color. Yeah, Does that exactly. matter? A lot of life has happened. A lot of life. A lot time. of life. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, so I would love to do movies because I do think they offer more opportunities to you. Yeah. Uh, in the big, it, they reach more people. Obviously, people love, love movies. But I do love the television process. Like, but if I, I could do this, you know, 
the stay on this track the rest of my life, like kind of be able to have a series or be able to like have a character that's going that people will appreciate in a show, I'd be happy. Well, it's shifting because as much as I, I love, don't get me wrong, love going to movies, I don't go to them as much as I do watching like Netflix or stuff on Amazon yeah. or it's just, they're making movies for TV now. Yeah. And it's the whole epic, epic 15 full, hour movies. Yeah. yeah. That you're binging in like a weekend. Yeah. yeah. It's just like, Peter Jackson style, three yeah. hours long, you know, 16 versions of them. And now let me ask you this, like yeah. you are drawn obviously more to comedy, it's in your blood for right. Pete's sake, but like what resonates with you on TV? Because to me, I find myself, the shows I, I really enjoy watching have kind of not a lot to do with comedy. I mean, they do have some elements and I do love comedy, but I think the shows I get really obsessed with are drama. Well, like House these, of Cards, yeah, House I'm of addicted cards. to. I'm super into Game of Thrones. Like, I, and I don't know if I just want to break from what I already have to kind of focus on all the time, and that's why I'm so drawn to it, but, and that they're amazing fucking shows, but, right. I, but ultimately I think my brain's just like, we want to just kind of Go, be I know, into something else. No, yeah, and that yeah. makes complete sense. I, I'm like that from time to time, but there's also times where I feel like some of that stuff is just, unless it's like ridiculously gory. Like I, I got into Ash vs. Evil Dead, which I loved because oh. it's so ridiculous, but it's still kind of funny. I have to But watch it's that. just gory beyond belief. Um, I don't know. I still think I when I watch TV, I gravitate more to the comedies because I'm like, I want to come home and I want to feel good. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. want to sit there and be depressed and See, just I love watch. To feel bad and depressed. Well, that's good, <laughs> so, and that's fine, and a lot of I mean, and a lot of people do. Different but, strokes, you know. It is. There we go. That's what makes us apples and oranges. Yeah, exactly. Apples and oranges. Because I just bring so much light to people. Yeah, no. That I almost have to like re and like just, replenish the dark. I am Eeyore. You know? I've got the I've got the cloud over my head twenty four seven. So See? I want to be happy when yeah. I come home. There you go. Yeah. Forensic files. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. You get it. <laughs> but no, I liked. I liked <laughs> my people. <laughs> I liked. That's why I said I liked the brink because it was smart. And thank you. And then workaholics was. It gets a little raunchy for me sometimes. I, a lot of people say that. But I don't I, think. I think the only people it doesn't get raunchy for are like thirteen to eighteen. It's, a, millen boys. it's, it's, yeah, it's like, a millennial. They're just like this is my life. It's a cult, it's a cult classic. This is Forgot. what I want my life to be. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly. And the rest of us are like, really, you want to jerk off in your car with your friends? Like I don't understand. It's a it's a live action South Park. Yes. Oh, totally. Yeah. Which I and I, I get a kick because, you know, I have a lot of nephews. They're all getting into it now. Oh, They're yeah. all in like, you know, that 14 to 18 year old range. They weren't, they were too young to watch the show when I started. And so now like, it just like, it was like from one summer to the next, it's like me coming home. Hi, Aunt Mary Beth. Like, <laughs> now we know what you do. Like, oh my God, all my friends love you. So I get a kick out of like that, that demographic, yeah. the millennials. Oh my god, I sound so old. No, it, I, like the, them, like really appreciate. I hate saying it, but, but it's like a mi mindless millennials. That yes, they're just... totally, totally. And there's certain like jokes I get, but I agree with it. A lot of it, I'm just like, what is really like? Sometimes I'm just like, I don't even get why this is funny. And then you go on Twitter, and it's just like, da -da 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 -da, and you're like, okay, well, I'm old, so there it is. <laughs> I have a workaholics clip that we could show. Ooh, let's see it. Let's see. Let's it. see it. Why not? It's just like it's that kind of humor. I love it's it. Just, it's just, it's just totally like, oh, I, uh, I just what do feel you like all I ever do is look at them and think in my brain, I fucking hate you. Like that's <laughs> literally my acting. That's all that happens. It's deadpan. I fucking hate you. That's a wrap. <laughs> you know, like. Do you learn like, lines? Deadpan. I fucking hate you. That's the process. Do you gravitate to more like with roles, uh, comedy or drama? Well, I wish I could have, you know, I would love to do more drama and, you know, my reps are doing a great job of trying to get me out on that stuff, but I just think when you come from seconds, I feel I like know. I everyone kind of I, I set test my road. Us. Yeah, as soon as there I am right yeah. there. It, it, moving to LA, they're like, "Oh, Second City, you're a funny girl, done and done. Nowhere to put you." Yeah. And like, like, well, I did go to acting school. Yes. I mean, I played. I'm a thespian. I did a Shakespeare, Mary Wives of Windsor once, you know. And they're like, "Yeah, you comedy bitch," you know, like. I wasn't Peter Pan. Do you tell City. them that? Yeah, I was Peter Pan. I did musicals. <laughs> There's not a lot of musical auditions out here in LA. There's uh, not. There should be. There should be, right? There should oh, be more did you, theater. Have out you here. seen Gallivant? Yes, of course. I just auditioned for his new show, Hey That's and Mary. That's a funny. That is, uh, he gave it to Casey Wilson. So mm -hmm. thanks, well, Brian. 
Um, but it, he's doing great. I mean, the McCarthy's, and yeah. obviously we work together so much on Second City, so to see him blowing up the way that he is, it's amazing. Oh. I mean, he deserves it, and then some. <laughs> he's such a good writer, and he was so writer-driven in the processes of Second City that it was amazing to watch. Like, I think all of us were just like, let's just go out and improvise. He's like, you had this one line last night. I transcribed it after you, <gasps> you know, after the set. Like, he'd just be so organized about, like, what, what made something work. And, you know, the rest of us were just like, let's go get some drinks. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still improvising with people now in, from Second City in Detroit, right? Do you... Mostly three, Detroit, actually, which has been really nice. In your improv, is it three one? It's three one three. The three one three is all Second City Detroit people, um, and it is Keegan Michael Key, Larry Campbell, Josh Funk, Naima Funk, uh, Jamie Moyer, myself, uh, Nancy Edwards, Andy Cobb, uh, Mark Warzeka, and Sam Richardson. Is that everybody? Uh, Nailed it. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Give and or take. So we're all, yeah, Second City Detroit based, and we, you know, we don't get to do a whole lot of shows because, you know. It's hard to get everyone together. Oh my gosh. But, uh, it's hard to get Keegan Michael Key together. Well, he's yeah, he literally, I mean. Took off. Oh my gosh. He's doing everything and anything right now. Well, Key yeah, and Peel so. was amazing, which you got to be a part I of did. too. Yes. I played, I always forget the chick's name, but she was uh, So You Think You Can Dance Judge, Judge. Sonia Tai. Is that right? I, anybody who ever watched I it? I couldn't, I, I didn't catch the name. She just had an awesome mohawk. She had a mohawk and, like and ridiculous. And I got to do that and it was fabulous. And I got to live out my punk rock fantasies for like a hot scene, which was great. So, See? I yeah, think, he's doing, I mean, and then my other group is Mama's Boy, which is right. Jamie Moyer and Nancy Edwards and Amy Phillips, who are all Second City Detroit people too. So I am very lucky. I improvise still a lot, which I love. And I, it's great too because I think with Second City, you kind of have to improvise with the people that you're put into a cast with. Yes. And then once you're out of Second City, you get to pick the people you want to improvise Perfect. with, yeah. which is really nice. So uh, I got to create and be a part of ensembles of like, it's your, it's oh, a, we're all handpicked by each other because we love each other. Yeah, and yeah. it's your family and yeah. you know each other and it's kind of, you can banter on stage and off of stage and exactly. you know what works and what doesn't work. Exactly. And when you're best friends with those people, which yeah. I am so many of them, it makes the improv that much better. Which yeah. is great. Yeah. Yay! Yay! Mary Beth, I think How we're out of time. How's everyone doing? Interview. I know. I think we're done. Are we done? I, we are done. Do you don't have any more clips? I have one more clip that oh, I want see because it. um, I, I have, can I just? It's, I was having so much fun. Our friend Jarrett was sending me all the was sending me a lot of these oh, clips, Jared. or he gave me a list of. How does he have these? Did he just? I don't know. Record all I the was, DVDs from Second City. Yes. Oh my God, I love him so much. And I was, I actually was like, oh hey. Um, do you have photos of Mary Beth and all this stuff? And can you give me your list of what your favorite clips were? And he's like, oh, well, do you need copies of them? Because I can edit them. I was like, oh, Second City's getting them for me. But thank you. He's like, oh, Second City's getting them for you. And I was, so he was really excited That's to so be sweet. able to. I love him. He gave me a list of all of his favorites. I love and that he, like, took copies with him. He took like, copies with him and he watches them and he loves them because it's when we all work there together and it was just that was, was our such a really magical time. It was it a really lot, was, a lot of I think fun. For all of us. I, and all of us I remember the cast being so close to yeah. like the people in the house. And the like, people that would work there. It was it was family. Yeah. And that's what I loved about Second City cuz you didn't necessarily have to be a part of the main stage cast or ETC cast. You were well, why would you want to be a part of the ATC guy? Nailing it. <laughs> but you always felt a part yes. of a just one giant big of family. The best theater. Of, which it was it was it was so lucky it to was, it be was, a part of. Yeah. And we were in our twenties and we were I just know. making such stupid mistakes. You're just like, lots like, of there's stupid no other mistakes. Place that gives that much power to idiots. Where like, a lot of your paycheck went to the bar. Oh God. It was it's brilliant. It's almost like Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're basically like they're the Walmart of comedy. They're like, we're going to give you a check, and then we know you're going to drink it all back to us. Yeah, so, it's always oh great God. when you owe them. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Why do I have a balance of I what I owe I... you? Oh, that's what you owe the bar tab. Mm, but great. I think you need to sing more. Thank and you. And I want to go leave on a clip of you another beautiful song. Oh, This gosh. also then shows your Getting talent on a tomorrow. dulcimer? Oh, God. No, it's an auto what? harp. It's an auto yes. harp? Okay. Which I, I learned solely for this song. I learned how to play the auto harp just for this song. I had never played it before. Okay, know that. <laughs> and now watch this. 
I grew up in a kind of sheltered white bread town. There wasn't much diversity, no, there wasn't much around. But on my TV one fine day, I looked up and I had to say, Hey, Mom, who is that boy with Charlie Brown? And it was Franklin. <laughs> <laughs> that boy was Franklin, and he was different. But Charles Schultz never let him talk. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Schultz, what's going on with that? You drew me into existence in 1968 at the height of black consciousness, and you never let me disclose my point of view on the civil rights movement. And then when it came to the TV shows, like it's a happy Thanksgiving, Charlie Brown, Snoopy fought with that damn lawn chair for 45 minutes on the show. Then y'all had the nerve to sit me in it when it came to be dinner time. That thing folded me up like I was on the Amistad. <laughs> then you serve me burnt toast and popcorn, and you keep me in a turtleneck and corduroys year round. And what the fuck is up with my hair? <laughs> I wish I had written a song about Pigpen. Pigpen? He had chlamydia. <laughs> you and Antoine. The weirdest song ever. <laughs> I forgot about that. And, oh. and then I love to end on a weird song. But Mary Beth, thank you so much for oh coming. Oh my gosh, thank, thank you for so having me. Thank you guys so much, so much for coming. And I will thank see you, you next month. Yay, Yay. thank you so much Yay. for having me.